Psalm 82 verse 5. He said, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course because they know not, because they don't understand, because they lack light and walk in darkness. Everything is upside, upside down around them. Everything is haywire around them. This morning, before we, we, we receive the anointing, we are looking at the necessity of divine direction. In our month, where we are connecting divine direction in order to overflow in glory and overflow in grace. Our objective this morning is to understand why it is necessary to have direction from God. Why is it necessary to have direction from God? Why is it necessary to hear from God? Now there are vital, indispensable necessities of life, of the physical life. Vital, indispensable necessities. Such as eating. Such as drinking such as bathing, walking, resting after work. These are vital, indispensable necessities of life. You have to eat. You have to drink water. You have to bath. You have to walk. You have to rest when necessary. Nobody begs you to eat or begs you to drink except something is wrong. Now, physical life can actually be endangered when the physical necessities are ignored. Where somebody is not eating as he should or drinking or bathing and so on and so forth, physical life is in danger, is in jeopardy. Life is physically doomed. And as it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. It was Maurice Cerullo of Blessed Memory who said, all truths are parallel. In the spiritual, there are vital, indispensable necessities of the spiritual life. That the spiritual life can do without. Like studying the word. Like praying like hearing God very very indispensable a person's life both spiritual physical and career can be doomed because he couldn't pray he couldn't study the word and he couldn't hear God we are going to be looking at Examples of people in scripture who had God and what they hear, what how necessary it was for them to hear God. I'm going to look at five examples very, really quickly. Number one is Abraham. Abraham, through hearing God, moved his life from stagnation and frustration to celebration. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, all the way to verse 5. He moved his life from stagnation and frustration to celebration by hearing God. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, the truth of the matter is, nobody would have heard that Abraham existed if he didn't hear God. Also in, Ab on, in Abraham's case, if you look at Genesis chapter 22, I ca you can read all the way from verse 1 all the way to verse 17. True hearing God. Abraham
Abraham was able to do the right thing by offering the ram instead of his son Isaac when it was time to offer Isaac. You know, the first thing Abraham heard from God was to go to the, 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 the land of Moriah, to the mountains of Moriah, and God will show him one of those mountains there where he would offer his son. Abraham got to the mountain of Moriah. He lifted up his sword. There are many things in that passage we cannot go into now because we have many things to say this morning. He lifted up his knife to slash his son and God said from heaven, hold it, don't kill the boy. Now I am convinced that you, 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 you fear me. Question I will ask you is, supposing Abraham didn't hear God at that point, and the only thing he heard was the last thing he heard, go and kill your son. Isaac would have gone for nothing. That is why it is not only necessary to hear God yesterday, it's important to hear God today. Because God can adjust instructions based on conditions. He gave an instruction before, but your condition, the situation of things around you now, makes him to adjust the, con the, the instruction. There are people who say they heard God, but they did the wrong thing they heard from God because God has said something else now. I am telling you the necessity of hearing the voice of God. Isaac could have been gone for good if Abraham did not hear God. There are many pastors in ministry today. There's so much frustration in ministry because the last time they heard God was 20 years ago when they were entering ministry. After that, they heard nothing again. And they have been walking with old, old, old instruction. Meanwhile, there is a currency of instruction. A currency of instruction they are not aware. I prophesy to somebody here today. Your ears shall be open. And you shall hear what God is saying to you now. You believe that shout the Lord and say, Amen. If somebody here heard God, well, that marriage shouldn't have happened. That wedding shouldn't have, that, that relationship shouldn't have been. That business investment shouldn't have been at all. That was Abraham's example, number one. Number two, Isaac. Through hearing God, Isaac was able to avoid the error of traveling in the wrong direction. Through hearing God. In Genesis chapter 26 verse 1. Genesis chapter 26 verse 1. All the way to verse 4. And there was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gera. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Which means God perceived in his heart. That he was trying to he was trying to make a move towards Egypt. God saw that he was having a temptation. Nigeria is so hard, let me move to America. Nigeria is so tough, let me move to Germany. Everything is so bad, let me move to the UK. And then Isaac was contemplating and God who reached the heart, he said, move not down to Egypt. I know that everybody is getting green card. I know that everybody is doing visa lottery. I know that everybody is moving now. People are checking out. Don't make that move. Dwell in this land, which I, I will tell you of. 
sojourn in this land this particular land where there is dryness now and i will be with you here and i will bless you for unto you and unto your seed i will give all these countries here and i will perform the oath which i swear unto abraham your father and i will make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven i will give unto your seed all these countries and in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed isaac remain in that land and in verse 12, Isaac sold in that land. And the Lord blessed Isaac in that land. And he received a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man was great. And went forward. And grew until he became very great. And he had possessions in the land of famine. The land where there was a temptation to run away from. The Lord blessed him. He had possession of flocks. And possession of herds. A great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him if you can hear God you will be envied where others are pitied if you can hear God beloved don't don't achieve motion based on situations Achieve motion based on revelation. Let revelation fuel motion. If you are ever going to make a move in life, let it be, let it be because God said something or God showed something. Don't let circumstances cause you to make moves. Don't let situations cause you to make moves. Am I communicating? The necessity of divine direction. How many people now, are, and, and people are hearing us from all over the world. People are hearing us now in the UK and so on. I met a man in the UK about seven or eight years ago. And that man had lived there for 30 something years. He was 60 something years. A professional. And this man said he was ashamed to go back home because he had nothing to go home to meet after 30 years. And there was nothing in the UK. He had no house there after 30 years. None there and none at home. Now the cheapest place to get a house is, 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 is abroad. is UK, US. Because you get it on credit. <laughs> Mort the gauge. And then you are, they are removing the money every month. You can be paying for 30 years. Here you have to buy it raw now. Well, we have, we have, we have mortgage situations here as well. Yet, after 30 years, he had not a house. Your success is not in a destination. It is in a revelation. Your fulfillment in life is not, is not necessarily in a particular location. It is in a revelation. It is in what God said. You wouldn't have heard of Isaac now. Nobody. If Isaac moved down to Egypt, that would be the end of Isaac in the Bible. Who we'll hear anything beyond there? As far as Isaac is, was concerned. How many people moved their destiny out of relevance? They are, they are, Canada has opened its door. Canada has, everybody, you want to go to Canada? Canada, Canada. What are you talking about? Supposing your life's assignment and destiny is in Nigeria. And they gave you free residency permit in Canada. Or in UK, what is residency permit without destiny fulfillment? What is green card without a green, a green light to fulfill your destiny? What do you want out of this life? Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? It is very, very critical that you don't move by sight, move by light. If only you will agree to move by light and not move by sight, you will gain your height. That was Isaac. That is why it is very necessary. Very necessary. Some people are wondering why things are so that things are not working. Why are things so tough? Why is it that either in the wrong business, in the wrong location, in the wrong connection? In a wrong, something's wrong somewhere. This month, you will hear God and hear God clearly. 
If you are a believer, shout the louder, amen. If you are, if you are a believer, shout the loudest, amen. The blessing that we saw in verse 12 to 14, we will never have seen it. Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year. If Isaac had moved to Egypt, that blessing will never have been seen. Say the Bible says, how good and how pleasant is this for brethren to dwell it, together in unity. It is like the ointment that came on the bears of Aaron. And then it's like the dew that fell on the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. There, there is a place for your commanded blessing. There is a location for your commanded blessing. And if you are in another location, you just waste your life. You will not be wasted. Somebody say loud amen. You will not be wasted. You will not be wasted. You will not be wasted. Shout the loudest amen. Third example is the prophet Samuel. True hearing God. The prophet Samuel was able to pour the right oil on the right head. Mm. through hearing God he was able to pour the oil on the right head he was able to escape the trap of assumption through hearing God he was able to do the right thing he was able to do the will of God I am talking from 1 Samuel chapter 16 if you read from verse 1 all the way to verse 13 when God sent Samuel to the house of Jesse to anoint a king and Samuel stood and carried the oil and looked at one of them, Eliab, because the man was tall and hefty. He said, surely this is the Lord's anointing. And God said, that this is not the man. He saw Shammah. He saw Abinadab. They passed all the songs. God said, I have refused them. Be careful. I am, I am God, not man. Men look after the outward appearance. People look at container. I look at content. You know, there are many people who married container. Fine, tall, dark, good color, has money, has everything. In fact, you can walk gingeliously. And then when they got married, they realized that the wall couldn't help the marriage. The walking step couldn't help the marriage. People are busy looking at container, but I'm looking at content. People are busy looking at the moment, but I'm looking at the future. I've refused them. So Lord, what are you saying? There is still another guy who is not yet here. So where is the other one? He said, he's in the bush. Send for him. We won't sit until he arrives. Supposing the oil was poured on the head of Eliab, what would have become of Israel? Disaster, destruction. Many of us poured our oil on the wrong heads. And that oil can represent anything. You put your money in the wrong business because you didn't hear God. Am I communicating at all? In just, just in the wrong direction. Samuel, hey. When God said, get to the house of Jesse and I will show to you. Samuel hurriedly concluded that. You see, many of us move by assumptions because of bankruptcy of revelation. And when revelation is scarce, assumption is abundant. It's okay to do it like this. It's okay. Other people are doing it like this. Oh, I did it like this before it worked. Let's do it again like that. You will never miss it. Say a louder amen. Somebody say a louder amen. If God is speaking to you, shout the loud most amen. Lift your right and say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace. I receive direction. I shall not miss it. I will not miss it. I cannot miss it. In the name of Jesus. Fourth example was King David. 
I have so many things to tell you about King David. Many years ago, Papa Yeriko preached a message titled The Conqueror's Trade Secret. And that secret was a secret of receiving direction from God using David. Every single time you will hear David inquired of the Lord. David inquired of the Lord. David inquired of the Lord. When the Amalekites smote him, he inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue, shall I overtake? God said, pursue, overtake, without fear, recover all. First Samuel chapter 30 from verse 1 all the way to verse 20. When he went and delivered the people of Ziklag, and then Saul came to Ziklag, he asked God again, Lord, what's happening? God said, Saul is coming. Really? Will he come? Yes, he will come. Will the people of Ziklag hand me over to them, to him? The people that I came to deliver, to fight for, will they hand me over to King Saul? God said, yes, he, 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 they will. When Saul come, they will hand you over to him. And then David said, oh boss, guys are bad. These people that I fought for will hand me over to my enemy. Let's be on our way. That was how he escaped. David escaped many traps and snares of the enemy by direction. There are many people who died before their time. Not because the devil was too wicked. Not because God was not merciful. But because they failed to hear. Now, the most striking one for me, for David, happened in 1 Chronicles chapter 14. And in verse 8 to verse 17, I want, I want you to read that. It's very, very interesting. First Chronicles chapter 14, verse 8 to 17. When the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David. Uh, so you are the next king. We'll look for you. Hear me. Every time you get a fresh mantle, the enemy will attempt a fresh battle. New levels, new devils. That was what they were trying to do to David. You just got a new anointing? All right, let's come and try it. Let's, let's shake the ground. Let's see how powerful that anointing is. And they only came to die. Every, every devil looking for you in this 2022, they came to die. They only came to die. Every witch and every wizard who came to try the prophetic declaration and announcement over this over your life this year, they only came to die. You believe that? Shout the Lord and say amen. See what happened. Please sit down. They came to seek David and David heard of it and went out against them. He went out directly against them. Look at all this. And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God. This is a warrior. He had fought countless battles and won. He knew the technique of war. But he knew too much to go to war just like that. Shall I go up against these Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? Because I don't want to depend on my power and my strength. And the Lord said unto him, go up, face them straight. I will deliver them into your hand. So they came up to Baal Perazim. The word Baal Perazim is master breakthrough. I prophesy to somebody here, you are about to get a master breakthrough. Where the devil think he wants to engage you in warfare is your place of master breakthrough. You believe he shall the Lord say amen. Look at what happened. And they came to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there. Then said, then David said, God has broken in upon my enemies my, by my hand, like the breaking forth of waters. Therefore, they called the name of that place Baal Perazim, the place of breaking forth. And they left their gods there. So the people took charm to war. They left their gods. I see, those who attend the interview with you, some of them enter with charm. That's
That's why you must not enter normally. You must enter rugged. You must enter leke teke ke babarada. You must enter on fire. Those who are contending with you, they are contending with diabolic powers. They are contending with occultic powers. Those people who are not just depending on their AK-47. Those terrorists you see, they sacrifice human beings. They drink blood, do a lot of things to make themselves rugged in war they are not just doing a religious thing they are doing an occultic thing but we declare their power die in this season take your seat i like you to hear this and then david and he commanded and they and he set them on fire now look at the next verse and the philistines yet again one thing you must give the devil an award for is tenacity where are you coming from to and fro from job to job from job to job they came here after they suffered the master defeat. The kind of defeat you would think they will never rise their head again. They came yet again. Listen to this. Spread themselves abroad in the valley. Now, if it was us normally, what will you do? I beat them before. This is a walkover. Come, let me smack you. Not David. David, therefore, inquired again. Somebody say again. Of God. Should I go and just trash them like I did? And God said unto him, don't go. Go not up after them. One translation said, don't go like you went the last time. Turn away from them. Last time you went and faced them, said, turn away from them. And move and ambush them from the back. Come upon them against over, against the mulberry tree. He gave a particular location, a tree that was located in the trees like a forest. Now, that is not even all. He said, when you, now, three instructions. Don't face them. Turn. Come against them from another side. Number two, locate a particular set of trees. Number three, when you come to the trees, wait. You will hear footsteps on top of the trees. Have you ever seen where anybody can hear the footstep on top, on tree top? It is only Jehovah who can hear the footstep of ants. That himself can walk on top of trees. He said when you hear the sound of a marching on top of where you shall hear a sound of going, like a movement of troops on the tops of the mulberry trees, that is when you are set to go for the battle. Because it is Jehovah that is moving there with his troops. That is an indication that God is gone forth. That is an indication that Obada Bada, Omanya Manya, he has gone on in, in front of you. He doesn't need to walk on the ground. He walks on top of the trees with his host in heaven. He has gone ahead of you. That is when you are confident that you will win the battle. I speak to someone by prophecy. Jehovah shall go before you in the battle in this season. He shall go before you in the battle in this season. He shall go before you in the battle in this season. Somebody shout the Lord and say amen. Look at your neighbor say, please don't depend on human experience. Experience can fail. But direction can't fail. Take your seat in Kano. Hallelujah. See, if, if, if it is us, our experience shows that this is how it is done. And many of us experience finished us. The experience of somebody or our own previous experience. And God is saying to you, it is not so. You don't know what mystery the enemy is employing at this time. Let me give you a different strategy. This, it is the same enemy. It was probably the same location. But there has to be a change of strategy, a change of approach for this particular situation. That is the necessity. Vital, crucial, critical necessity. 
of divine direction. Is somebody getting anything from here today? Very, 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 very necessary. Very, very necessary. Many, many people enter the trap of marriage. Marriage to method. Marriage to tradition. They are married to a particular method. They are married to a particular, a particular approach. They are married to a particular tradition. And because of that, they end in frustration. But David broke it by direction and revelation. You will break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Final example I'm going to give is Paul the Apostle. This to me is um, one of the most striking cases of direction in the Bible. Direction and also taking direction for granted. Paul the Apostle. Look at this. Paul the Apostle was a man that, how do I put it? From his call, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, and in verse 3, we saw how Paul the Apostle on his way to Damascus encountered God. So he began his journey by divine direction. Encountered God from verse 3 all the way to verse 10, where he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And then he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, yes. Next verse. And then he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which were journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth. When his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and he neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple as Damascus named Aeneas, and unto him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Now we we'll stop there. Saul received, Paul the apostle received his ministry by divine direction. He continued the same ministry by divine direction. Look at Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Uh, there, there is so much to read here and I'm going to read. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galicia, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. So it is possible for the Holy Ghost to forbid a person to preach the word. As good as preaching the word was, there was a place where he couldn't preach because the Holy Ghost said, don't preach here. Is it not true that we want to preach everywhere? And the Holy Ghost said, don't preach here. One place God told him, they won't accept your wit my witness here. They won't accept you here. Move. How many times did we waste energy doing what we thought was good, but God was not in it? Can you imagine somebody wanted to preach and God, the Holy Ghost said, don't preach here. There are people we laid hands on who were not meant to near our hands. Our hands was not meant to near their head. And there are people who got their lives complicated by some people they tried to pray for. I'm telling you the truth. He was forbidden of the Holy Ghost. As one day Papa Yedeko said they went to Japan and began to preach and the anointing of the service was so heavy that the interpreter was crying while interpreting. And all of a sudden he felt God is leading them to Japan. Somebody already provided a building, facilities, everything was ready. The need was so enormous. While he got ready to move, God said, even though the need is massive there, you are not the one I'm sending there. Building is ready. People are ready. Anointing was heavy. Interpreter is weeping and interpreting. He said that was when he realized that we should not mistake a need for a call. It is possible the need is accurate. But are you called to meet that particular need? I follow what I'm saying here today. Jesus saw the man at the beautiful gate. Because that was the temple. He was preaching and telling people, destroy this temple, I'll raise this in three days. He saw that man, the man, the crippled man. He didn't branch near him. 
to touch him for prayer. He moved. He saw the paralyzed man at the he healed that one. He saw the woman with the issue of blood. He healed that one. He saw this one. He passed and entered the temple as if he was not the Messiah, as if he had no compassion, as if he had no pity. He passed, passed, passed until he resurrected and left. But the man was healed later by somebody Jesus imparted, whose name is Peter. Why did Jesus not heal the man? Two reasons. Not you. And not now. He must have heard from God. I will heal him. Not through you. And not now. Many of us think it is we all the time. And we also think it must be now all the time. <laughs> it's as good as good things are. There are good things that God will ask you not to do. By virtue of his own will. Take your sin. Now, I, I'm, I'm showing you something about Paul the Apostle. He was forbidden of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, they don't preach here. Should they go to hell? Leave that with me. And then, we saw Paul the Apostle again in Acts chapter 16, verse 7. Okay, let's read all the way to verse 10. All the way from that verse now. And then they were come to Mysia, they are saying they try to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit of God said, don't move there. And they came back, and they, they passing by Mysia, they passed that place where they wanted to go, came to Troas, and then a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood a man in Macedonia and begged him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. That was, and after we have seen the vision, after the Holy Ghost said, we shouldn't preach there. We shouldn't branch here. We now saw where he wants us to go. Immediately, he went into Macedonia. Assured, assuredly gathering that the Lord has called us to preach the gospel unto them. You will not miss direction. You will not miss your direction. Now, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18, verse 5, Acts chapter 18 and in verse 5, we also saw direction again. And when... Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. So, this was a man that was familiar with leadings. But listen, as familiar as Paul was with leadings, he took a decision that almost killed him before time. Am I communicating? On your spiritual journey, never be overconfident at any time of anything. Paul took a decision that almost took his life before time. What was that decision? I must go to Jerusalem. I must go to Jerusalem. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 22, all the way to verse 24, Paul was saying, now, behold, I go bound in the spirit. Bound. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. This man says, I'm going bound in the spirit. I don't know what shall befall me there. Except that the Holy Ghost is witnessing everywhere. That chain is waiting. Affliction is waiting. Uh-uh. Is it that God wants me to go into the chain and the affliction? Everybody is testifying. Paul, Wahala Day. The Bible says his commandments are not grievous. Now, he said, but none of these things move me. Neither do I count my life dear to myself. That is, so that I, I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the grace of God. That is, I will go to the Jerusalem. If I die, then let me die. He's boasting first. When they came to, to a place where there was prophet Agabus, Acts chapter 21 verse 10, Agabus took his mantle. And as they tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. 
And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's own gadu and bowed his own hands and feet and said, Thus said the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owns this gadu, and they shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place, we besought Paul, we begged Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what do you mean to weep and to break my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem. Die at Jerusalem <laughs> for the name of Jesus Christ. And when they will not be persuaded, when he cannot be persuaded, we, we, we stop. Let the will of God be done. That was how Saul, Paul, took himself bound to Jerusalem. The question is, did God send him to Jerusalem? In Romans chapter 9 verse 3, Paul the apostle kept on expressing sentiment. I wish that myself were a cause from Christ. If possible, let God curse me for my brethren, the Jews, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul, your calling is in Jerusalem. Did God send you to the Jews? Answer is capital no. Galatians chapter 2 verse 7 to 8. I like, I'm, I'm taking you on a journey. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision, that is Paul speaking, the gospel of the Greeks and the Gentiles was committed to me and the gospel of the circumcision unto Peter, they gave us the right hands of fellowship. That is, Peter, your assignment, your preaching, your gospel, your assignment is with the Jews. Paul, your assignment, your preaching, your ministry is to the Gentiles. Paul said it himself in Romans chapter 11 verse 13. He said, I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify my office. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles of the Gentiles. I magnify my office. Yet, at this point, this man said, I must go to Jerusalem. I must go to Jerusalem. I must go to the Jews. They begged him, no way. Let me spare you the detail. The moment Paul arrived in Jerusalem, he was carrying a man by the name Trophimus, whom they saw. And when he entered the temple, they shouted, help, people help. This man that is troubling us all over the world has just appeared. And now he has brought Gentiles into the temple to defile the temple. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He saw, he ate kwa kwa. <laughs> kwa -kus. That was how they carried Paul. Now, before then, some people told Paul, as soon as he arrived, say, the Jews have been planning for you. They are waiting for you. They say, if this man land is a dead man. So you know what? Scrape your head. Do all the rites of purification. Paul, that was a celebrity among the Gentiles, they were lying down worshipping him as a god. Here he became a non-entity. Scraped his head. Entered into the temple. When they, all, they almost killed him. That's what scripture says. I'll show you the passage. They were about to kill him. Then the centurion, the leader of the band arrived. And rescued Paul from his hand. Because he heard that he was a Roman citizen. Paul. The fact that you are a Pharisee before. Does not mean your ministry must be with the Jews. You are not the one to determine where to minister to. That is one mistake that some people make. Oh, I was formerly of the other religion and so I have repented now. So uh, God is leading. It's not compulsory. It's not compulsory. Why am I not uh, ministering in my village or in my state now? It's not compulsory. But Paul was insisting. When they dealt with him, they dealt with him. They dealt with him. They dealt with him. 
One day some Jews came and said to the high priest, please give us Paul. We want to talk with him and just find out some things. He said about 40 people swore with a note, blood, that they will not sleep until they kill him. That they will kill and they had planned it. Paul's brother's his sister's son, his, his nephew, head of the plot, and came and told Paul, he said, Uncle, I don't know what brought you to this problem. But as I am telling you now, 40 people have vowed that they will not eat, they will not drink, they will not sleep until you are dead. They are showing you the scripture. I don't know what we are going to do. Paul, who said, I am ready to go to Jerusalem to die. He said, please help me take this boy. <laughs> the man who said, nobody should, nobody should trouble me. I was hearing God before all of you. I, 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 I can. He said, take this boy to the, high, to, the, to the centurion, the commander. Let him tell them this plan. I can't die now. I can't die now. I thought he would say, take me to them. Who are the people who want to kill me? He said, the Jews have, sir, the man is my uncle. Forty people have sworn that they will not sleep until he dies. The man said, okay, don't tell any other person that you told me this thing. That was how he planned Paul's escape overnight. He suffered so terrible. Eventually, he arrived in Rome, the place of the Gentiles that he was running away from. Eventually, that was where his journey took him back to as a prisoner. When he was there, originally he was a free person preaching. Now he had to return back to the Gentiles as a prisoner. And not without terrible turbulence. Inside the ship, the ship scattered. 273 people on board. All of them almost died. Except God had mercy on him overnight. When they landed on the island, Viper arrived. If you don't want to hear what, you must see something. <laughs> you just, just ask any child who doesn't hear what. You must see something. He, he, escaped, he escaped the storm. The Viper said, we are waiting here. You are the one who put yourself in this wahala. You will never miss it like that. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody shout the loudest amen. Please take your seat. All that you read in Acts chapter 21 from verse 26 all the way to verse 33. And then that was when they, when they accosted Paul to, for his destruction and then Acts chapter 23 from verse 12 to verse 22 where Paul's sister, where they, he had the plot and they came. Now they still handed Paul over to the Gentiles. Is it not possible that God will take him to the Gentiles to minister effortlessly without passing through this kind of wahala? If he had heard what the Holy Ghost witnessed to him and to others and had also known that look my assignment is to the Gentiles. I have a burden for my people. But as I do my assignment faithfully to the Gentiles, God will send to my people who should deliver them. And he did. Beloved, learn from Apostle Paul that if you know how to hear God, you can also miss God. If You throw away caution. You know how to hear God. You are an expert in hearing God. You can miss God. If you get overconfident of your abilities. In summary. Why is it necessary to receive divine direction? The necessity of divine direction. And then I round off there. Number one. To avoid the traps and snares of destruction. You must hear God. To avoid the traps and snares of destruction. It is critical that God speaks to you to avoid 
the traps and snares of destruction. Number two, to avoid running life in the wrong direction. Running life in the wrong direction. To avoid running your life in the wrong direction. We must hear God. We must receive from God so that our lives are not run in the wrong direction direction to avoid running life in the wrong direction there are so many people what is wrong is not the devil it's just that they are facing the wrong direction they are put they are pursuing the wrong things expecting to arrive at the right destination number three why is it necessary to receive direction to avoid pouring energy and effort in the wrong direction to avoid pouring our energy and our effort in the wrong direction so you don't pour your energy you don't pour your effort in the wrong direction it is important that we hear god and we receive from god to avoid pouring energy and pouring effort in the wrong direction number four to avoid putting resources in the wrong endeavors putting resources in the wrong endeavors investing resources in the wrong endeavors we must, it's necessary to hear God. Not every business is your business. That people are talking of properties and estate business does not mean that is yours. You see, oh, oil and gas, oil and gas, it's, that is not compulsory that is yours. To avoid putting or investing resources in the wrong direction, we need to hear from God. Number five, to avoid the tragedy of the wrong association. 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 To avoid it. Many people have been destroyed by wrong association. Wrong friends. Wrong hands laid on heads. Wrong oils poured on people. The tragedy of the wrong association. I was going to associate with one man. I will not go into the details many years ago. To the point of I want you to come to where we are and so on. And then one night, I saw the man standing in the revelation in the night. I saw him standing and I saw a big snake standing by his side. The same height with him. The same size, the same head size. And the man looked at me and he said, see this snake? We are together. I'm close to him. If you need anything from him, let me know. I said, what? You and the snake are together? Your marks get set, move. I woke up in the morning. I told my wife, I said, This is what I saw concerning so. And it's not, we're oh, talking of, I'm well, not going to details. No, it's not, it's not, it's not, a, it's not like a, an African man, like you say, Okay, it's black magic. That's what makes it worse. And I, 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 and, and, and I told my wife, I said, God loves us so much, He doesn't want us. To connect and associate with the Lord. Can you imagine? There are people who stepped on some altars and dried up that altar. There are music ministers who sing everywhere. Even the herbalists can invite them. They will go. At the end of the day, they are only making noise. Why is it that we are not hearing frequently that somebody's song was sung and the dead was raised? We need to hear that frequently. Or somebody had encounters by a particular song. All we are hearing is singing. Without impact, without lives changing. To avoid the tragedy of the wrong association. God will show you in a dream, in a revelation, or an audible voice, or even the witness of the spirit. This person can be your friend. That person can be, can lay hands on you. This person can be your associate. This person can't even walk in your organization. You know, if you put a Jonah in your, in your ship, you will sink the ship. One employee that is wrong in your organization is enough to close down the business. To avoid the tragedy of the wrong association, the wrong company, we need to know what God is saying and to hear from God. Somebody say a loud amen. Fifthly or sixthly, to avoid existence in confusion. In uncertainty. What do I do with my life? What can I do with my life? Existence in confusion. Existence in uncertainty. To avoid that, we must hear from God. Existence in confusion. Number seven, to avoid functioning in assumption. 
or living by experience. To avoid, just reduce life to assumption. Reduce life to this is right, my past experience. To avoid functioning by assumption. Functioning by assumption. Or functioning by presumption. To avoid that, we need to hear God. And finally, to avoid existence without expectation. Existing without expectation. Just, just leave you. You are looking forward to nothing. Because you didn't hear anything from God. You are looking forward to nothing. To avoid that, we need to hear from God. You shall not miss God. You shall not miss God. Very, very quickly, what does it take to hear from God? Now, for the information of every member of Dynamics Church, the whole of the month of January is dedicated to hearing from God. Why is it necessary? What is the profit of hearing God? How do I condition and position myself to hear God? What are the various ways in which God speaks? All those details shall be x-rayed this month. When we preach on healing, God heals people. When we preach on supernatural supplies, God supplies. And when we preach on hearing, people hear God. Just now you saw what happened. I am, I, and I announce to you today, before this month is over, your ears shall open and your eyes shall open and your understanding shall open and you shall both know and hear and experience what God wants you to do with your life. You believe that shall the loudest. Amen. Anybody receiving something today say amen. What does it take to hear from God? So this is preliminary. We'll go into details by midweek service. And then by Sunday service, we're just going to details. But what does it take to hear from God? Number one, be his sheep. My sheep, hear my voice. John chapter 10, verse 27. John 10, 27. My sheep, hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Be his sheep. Don't assume that you are a Christian, be a Christian. Be genuinely born again. John chapter 3, chapter 10, the same chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. It is the birthright of the sheep. He said to him, the potter open it and the sheep hear his voice. The sheep hear his voice. He called his own sheep by name and leaded them out. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. The sheep know his voice. You will know his voice from today. It is the privilege of sheep and of sons to hear God. To be his sheep. Number two, be desperate. Be desperate for his voice. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. If you desire direction like you desire water. If you desire direction from God like you desire food. David longed for the waters of the well of Bethlehem and he got it. Please don't forget what I'm about to say. God will leave you to do without what you are willing to do without. Did you hear what I just said? If you are willing and ready to do without hearing God, he will leave you without hearing him. Anything you, can, you want to do without God will leave you. It is when we come to the point where I can't do without this matter. I will stand up on my watch. And I will watch to hear. That's desperation. What he will say. I will stand up on my watch. Coming up as a child, a Christian. Every time I needed direction on a critical issue. It is a desperate three day fast. That is... Food eliminated, water deleted at those, in those times. Lord, what are you saying? In fact, including the date of marriage, 
after I had found who to marry, when is the right time for this wedding to happen? For he makes all things beautiful in his time. When is the right time for it? When is the right time for it? When is the right time for it? It took a waiting on the Lord for direction. For the time. People are marrying without asking God. And somebody is not just getting married, but asking when is the right time to do the marriage. After already getting the direction. Am I communicating? We, we, we live in a very careless generation. So people are just re living recklessly and just and things are just happening dangerously. But that will never be your portion. Anything you are not willing to do without that. One of the things that I feared most in life was to miss God. Missing God. So as, as a young Christian, I was very desperate. Lord, I can, any other thing can happen, but please don't let me miss you. In strategic moves, ministry moves, Destiny moves, career moves. Please don't let me miss you. And you will not miss God. Can somebody say a loud amen? Can somebody say a loud amen? Be desperate for his voice. And number three, be connected to the spirit. The spirit. Hearing from God is a function of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit was not only given to us to give us a prayer language. The Holy Spirit was given to us to give us direction. Romans chapter 8 verse 14, it said, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So, the sons of God are privileged to be led by the Spirit of God. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible said, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned, to, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was led by the Spirit of God. He was led. The details of the leading by the Spirit, we will know. Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he speaketh mysteries. First Corinthians chapter 14, I believe verse 2 of verse 4. Galate galakasti. Zikorate keze goda galatasa. When you are speaking like this, you are speaking in an unknown tongue. You are speaking mysteries means hidden secrets. Inside that secret may be who your wife is, may be who your husband is, may be who, where your future is. And if you continue to pray with expectation, the time comes where your spirit man becomes irrigated with revelation. At that point, you flow effortlessly with tongues and interpretation. Zekoko bagalakarete keke shukulakaparati sitata. 